Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, January 23rd, 2018. I want to remind you that this meeting is being recorded and to please turn off your cell phones. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Thank you. Good evening everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Healy? Ms. McCurdy? Here. Ms. Moon? Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? Present. All present. Thank you. I'd like a group of fourth graders from the Webb Elementary School to come on up to the front and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> over your hearts. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You did a great job. Thanks, everyone. You did a great job. Mr. Verderam, thank you for getting them organized for us. Thank you. Okay, I'm making a motion to table an agenda item to this evening's agenda under action item motion 6B. Do I, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion passes. Hey, Mr. Emmett, I think we have staff recognition tonight. We do. I have uh, Mrs. Tashner and Mrs. Dunham and some friends from Webb Elementary School who are going to be talking about flexible seating this evening. Come on up. Good evening. First of all, we'd like to thank Mr. Emmett, Board Chair Granado, as well as the rest of the Board of Education and our student rep for having us tonight. We are here to represent the web community, and I have very talented fourth grade students and very talented teachers in fourth grade who are here to talk about flexible seating. We did send you an article, and hopefully you had a chance to read that and the second article. And I would ask while you watch our presentation, you think about your own life, and when you walk in your family room, you choose whether you want to sit on the couch, in a chair, on the floor, or when you visit Starbucks and you decide where you want to sit. And these classrooms look very much like that because our students want to be comfortable while they learn and have definitely embraced the challenge of being effective. And I also want you to know something that's overlooked is there are still regular seats, there are still regular desks if, cho if chosen by students, and there are regular tables. And you'll hear today from some of the students, if their mood is right for that, they will sit at a desk, or if their mood is for calming in a bean bag, they will sit there. So I'm gonna turn it over to our fourth grade teachers and students. Thank you so much for having us this evening. Go ahead. To start off our presentation this evening, I um, just wanted to touch on what is a flexible seating environment in a classroom. Um, 
And that would be varied seating options where students can work throughout the day. Does it work? Um, it's all about giving students the option about where they learn best and teaching into choice and building student independence because a lot of times with choice comes more responsibility um, and coaching our students into knowing themselves as learners. Um, some of the benefits of flexible seating is allowing the students to choose where they want to sit every day. So um, there's a lot of problem solving going on and the students are working with different children within the classroom every day. Um, it builds agency and independence where they are choosing that just right spot. Um, it also depends on their day, how their mood is, if they want to sit alone, if they want to sit at a high table, if they want to sit at a desk. Um, and it also meets their physical needs, uh, students that um, are active, that need more movement. Instead of being confined to a desk, um, you can see right here some of the chairs. Um, there's a wobbly chair that allows them to work their core, believe it or not, and that's, that's great. It also allows the, like the yoga balls. Um, they may not look comfortable to you, but I've sat in them and they're comfortable, they really are. Um, so this, it, not only is it allowing them to benefit their academic needs, it also benefits their physical needs. So, there's various research out there. Um, a couple years ago when I started researching this, I was, was interested in what the current practice was and what the current research was. And quite frankly, there wasn't a lot. Um, but what the research did say when thinking about students and how engaged they are in the classroom is that whatever task at hand should dictate the appropriate seating option for them. Um, and we're seeing a shift towards a more active learning classroom mm -hmm. um, and a student-centered learning environment. And hence comes all of our flexible seating. The onus really and the focus is taken off of the teacher and more on the students. Okay. As Lorraine started to talk about, um, we have many options in our classrooms, um, some of which you see here today. And in addition to these, a lot of times the chairs aren't the same height as typical chairs in a classroom. So thanks to our staff at our schools, we've actually lowered a lot of the tables or heightened a lot of the tables to where um, the chairs are comfortable to sit. And also the floor, the carpet areas. Um, and also the, um, yeah, I think yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but also uh, we have, what's nice is with the whole point of flexible seating, we have the opportunity also where we've had parents donate. Um, uh, in my classroom, we had a parent that asked if I wanted a rocking chair. So that's become very popular. Um, we also have um, some of the camp chairs. I have a podium in my room because some kids just like to stand. And if you think about today in the business world, all you see now are those standing desks. So you can see that where these, these students are going in regards to in as they grow older, they're, they're able to make that choice and they'll have those options. Yeah, yeah. So um, in the pictures that you see here, um, these are pictures of um, my classroom and you can see some students are sitting on a wobbly seat um, some still, we still have corrals, which provide them if maybe they want that privacy, maybe, you know, not being distracted, they can choose a corral, which is, you can see in one of the, um, which I had a pointer, but, um, in one of the photos there. Um, even if you look at the student on the carpet, 
Um, he was happy with a Xerox box <laughs> sitting on the carpet, Xerox, empty Xerox box, put his laptop on there, and that's where he wanted to sit, and that's where he worked. Um, he was comfortable in working that day. These are um, a couple of pictures. The first picture are two students doing math, working together. Um, this is an optional table that's kind of like a coffee table that you would find in a living room, but it works really well with our yoga balls. Um, and they were doing a partnership activity and they chose to work problem solve together and say, where do we want to sit to complete this activity? And then also um, the, the blue table, sometimes we call them horseshoe tables in classrooms, um, has been lowered significantly to where students can sit on bean bags and work there. A lot of times I'll see students kneeling or um, you know, just sitting regularly to use those um, lower tables. Again, here's just some more uh, different scenarios. The yoga balls, students um, using, utilizing the yoga balls, and also you can see also utilizing desks and regular chairs. Um, so they have many choices. Um, and students don't gravitate to the same seat every day. It's really neat to see them maybe choose a different seat every day sitting with different children. One of the biggest benefits I think I found in my classroom is when students need to do not only partnership work together, but group work together. The um, students sitting at those yoga balls at the lower table right there, they're actually working on a Google Slides presentation for our readers workshop unit. And um, they decided as a team that that's where they wanted to sit and they could all face each other and talk to each other. Um, a lot of times, and Lorraine can talk about this more, it's called a Starbucks model. If you walk into a Starbucks or a Panera, mm -hmm. depending on the type of activity that you're there for, you're gonna sit in a very different place. Um, maybe you're meeting with someone on a you know, more casual basis, or maybe you're having more of a business type meeting. You know, where you sit um, can be dictated by the type of work that you're doing. Yeah. Um, so, in this picture, I actually have a, my desk. I don't sit at my desk very often, but my students like to sit under my desk. <laughs> so there's carpet squares, and you can see in this picture, one of my students just loves to sit <clears throat> under my desk. It provides him uh, an environment uh -huh. where he's not distracted with what he wants to do. Um, and then also you can see there's also a student that's sitting at a desk that has a corral, and um, that's what she chose for that day. So I'm gonna have Cassie. So, did you Cassie? Can I move this down? Yes. There you go. I'm Cassandra Pace, and this is just about a typical morning in Mrs. Tashner's classroom. We, what we do is we pick out a seat and we grab our book bins, we put our folders in our bin, and we, um, we read the morning message and we do lunch. Then we um, pick a seat and we start our work. Thanks. Nice job. So this is just a short video. Is there sound or not? Yeah. the rocking chair. <laughs>
Yeah, so as you can see, even the tables have the yoga balls and they have the wobbly chairs, but the students, just because they're on that table doesn't mean that it will go there. They may choose the wobbly seat to go sit at the desk or they might choose the stool to go sit somewhere else. So even though um, you have the tables and chairs where they are, they get to choose whatever they'd like to sit on that day. Good? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have some students that would love to tell you just a little bit more from their own account in our classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys want to come up and form a line? Come on. Okay, we're going to stop. Hi, my name is Kayla Hetchstrom, and I'm a student at Webb Elementary School in Mrs. Tashner's fourth grade class. Thank you for letting me come to this meeting. This evening, I'm going to be talking about flexible seating. In Mrs. Tashner's class, we have flexible seating in the classroom. We have a variety of seats. For example, we have yoga balls, we have wobbly stools and bean bags. My personal favorite is the regular chair because we put elastics at the bottom of the chair so your feet can hang or move. Another favorite seat of mine is a stool because it helps me concentrate, concentrate while working. But the best part about flexible seating is that you can pick what kind of chair you want depending on your mood. Also throughout the day you want to be very comfortable so flexible seating helps. Thank you for letting me explain why I love having flexible seating in my classroom. Hi, my name is Catherine Friedis and I am a student at Webb Elementary School in Mrs. Dunham's fourth grade class. In our class, we get to have flexible seating. There are varieties <coughs> of different seats to choose from. For example, we have yoga balls, stools, camping chairs, a rocking chair, bean bags, and regular chairs. To go with the camping chairs, we have many tables to do our work on, to do our work on. To add on to what I have said, we also have a low horseshoe table where you can sit or kneel on a bean bag. I like to do this sometimes when I am reading. My favorite place to sit with partners or a big group is the stools table. Since we have a lot of stools, there are enough for a big group of kids. At the stool table, we have a flat, long surface to do our work on. We can be responsible and productive at the same time. Also, during independent writing time, I like to sit on a chair that has a back. I like this because I can lean back and it is comfortable for me. Thank you for letting me explain why I love flexible seating best. Hi, my name is Cassandra Pace. I'm in fourth grade at Web, fourth grade at Web School and my teacher is Mrs. Tashner. This evening I'm going to be talking about flexible seating in the classroom. I like flexible seating because I can have the freedom to choose whichever seat I like to sit on. I usually like to sit on the stools. I like the stools because they're just like normal seats except they don't have any backs to them which gives me a more comfortable feeling. I like flexible seating in our classroom because throughout the day you can sit somewhere else with different people in your classroom. We have many different seats to choose from such as yoga balls, wobble stools, plain stools, plain chairs, chairs with rubber bands for your feet, bean bags, and rocking chairs. Thank you for your time and thank you for inviting me. I enjoyed explaining to you why I enjoy flexible seating. My name is Jason and I'm in Mrs. Tashner's class. One thing I like about flexible seating is that you can change your seat based on what your mood is. We have chairs, chairs with rubber bands, wobbly chairs, stools, bean bags, and yoga balls and rocking chairs. For, exa for example, when I have a lot of energy, I sit in an ordinary chair so I calm down. Also, when I'm tired, I sit in a wobbly chair so I can move around. My favorite chair to sit in is a chair with a rubber band and the rocking chair. Because yeah. you can move around but con concentrate at the same time. Thank you for letting me share what I like about having flex flexible seating in my classroom. Hello, my name is Kelsey Perkins. My teacher is Mrs. Dunham. I'm in fourth grade and I go to web school. My favorite place to sit during independent working time is in the library with the beanbag because it is quiet and I can get my work done without getting distracted. I think it is a good idea to have flexible seating because we can pick where we want to sit. It also gives us a chance to pick what is the most comfortable spot for us. 
When you don't have flexible seating, you can feel uncomfortable while you are working. And if you're not comfortable, you will not get a lot of work done. Also, depending on what kind of work you are doing and who you are doing the work with, you can choose the best seat. For example, during reading, if you are reading alone, you can sit on a beanbag away from others. During writing, if you are working with, the, with your partner, you can sit in a place where you can face them to talk to them. I think that all classrooms should have flexible seating for kids. Thank you for letting me tell you all about flexible seating in our classroom. Hi, my name is Mallory Mori. I am in fourth grade in Mrs. Tashner's class, and I go to Web. In Mrs. Tashner's class, we have flexible seating. I like flexible seating because of the different types of seating. For example, there's a rocking chair, some bean bags, regular chairs, stools, and wobbly stools. My favorite spot to sit is a regular chair because there is a big rubber band at the bottom of the chair and your feet can have more movement. I like the flexible seating because you can move around the room and sit in whatever chair you would like. Thank you for letting me talk about flexible seating in the fourth grade classes. Hello, Board of Education members, Mr. Emmett and parents. I am Sydney DeSolis from Mrs. Dunham class in Samuel B. Webb Elementary School. In our classroom, we have many flexible seating choices. Some choices where kids can sit are yoga balls, stools, and normal chairs. In our class, we can choose what we want to sit on during work time. Yoga balls are used during independent work time and during read aloud. Stools can be used anytime except a mini lesson. Same for normal chairs. Also, we have different kinds of stools. We also have a rocking chair that you can use during independent work time or when we go on a virtual field trip. We also have the choice to sit on the carpet or floor and occasionally in the library. We also can sit on a bean bag, which we can use anytime. My personal favorite is the yoga ball. I like this choice because it is good if you like to move around and I do very much. Thank you for listening to us today discuss our flexible seating system in our classroom. So that will conclude our our presentation on uh, flexible seating. If you have any questions for That was us, excellent. Very nicely um, done, first know, of all. Yeah. So, <laughs> nice job. Any questions from anyone? Hi, Chris. I'm glad you're here. Any questions? Uh, I was just rooting around for my beanbag chair from 1975. <laughs> I'd be happy to donate if I can get a tax you know, yeah. credit. I'd like to say, it, it, they did an excellent job. Yeah. Um, I love this kind of a classroom. And um, I also love their opinion writing. Uh -huh, that was you. very well done, boys and girls. Yeah. Nice job. Anyone else, Kevin? Um, have you had any feedback from parents on how they perceive it and how they felt it's had any change on, on their children? Absolutely. Uh, I, I definitely have had. Um, I've had positive feedback. Um, I think we've had positive feedback just because it provides um, the students the opportunity to um, choose different seating that will facilitate their learning that day. If they're active, then they don't have to, you know, sit in a chair. Um, it provides them with that ability to move around. Um, and they also have a choice to sit in a desk. We provide those desks. For those students that like to sit at a desk, there's that option. So I think it basically, this flexible seating addresses all learning styles, mm -hmm. as does Starbucks and we right. think about Panera as adults. And so, um, would you say that the you know, fourth grade is kind of a good starting, I mean, would you go, would, would you incorporate this in a lower level Absolutely, classroom? Yeah. Or? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, a lot of the research when I first started um, looking at this a couple of years ago was actually started in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the beautiful thing about flexible seating. It can look very different in every classroom, and it can accommodate the class and the teacher's style, quite frankly, um, to go along with that. So it's, it's, it's applicable, I think, across grade levels. We, we currently, have, at Webb, have a first grade teacher that um, decided to um, utilize the flexible seating, and it's working wonderfully within our classroom. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. John? Um, Great job, thank you. Um, you guys should really be proud of yourselves. 
uh, we had to sit behind a desk, and as you can see, we're sitting behind <laughs> and, uh, a wall for Chris. here. <laughs> but one of the things when you get older, you're going to want to see uh, something to hold up your back. But anyways, having said that, um, we have friends that live in Atlanta, Georgia, and they're doing this in their school mm. right now. I don't know if you've heard that or gone mm -hmm. online to see mm -hmm. what Atlanta, Georgia's classrooms are doing. Um, the the concept has grown and it's kind of like when we started our all day kindergarten. Uh -huh. What they're doing there is they're doing it in all of their first grades. Uh -huh. okay. So they've chosen a school and they're doing it in all the first grades. And then they, after that, that progress that stays and it just progresses up and then finally, you know, they figure out what they're gonna do. But one of the things they do is they don't have all different chairs. Uh -huh. They'll they'll switch chairs out in each grade. Interesting. Uh -huh. So thank you. John? What does the research say is the effect on student learning with this? So, yeah. yeah. Um, having this be something fairly new, we don't have a lot of long-term research right now, but mm -hmm. the long-term research that is out there is more centered around um, higher education mm -hmm. and um, the impact, the positive impact that it's having as far as accommodating everyone's needs within a learning environment. And it's, the research is phenomenal. I cut a few slides out to keep it a little shorter for you all. <laughs> um, but I'd be happy to send you the lengthy version. But I, mm -hmm. I believe there was one statistic, and don't quote me exactly, it was around 60% more effective during lecture times at a higher education level when students had free choice of seating as opposed to sitting behind a desk. Mm -hmm. And Rose? Um, some of the articles that I had provided um, speak to um, the benefit of having students within tables and flexible seating rather than in rows. So, Elaine, see the oh, additional sorry. research. Sure, I was sure. really wondering whether it was a, a comfort thing, yep. which has a corresponding effect, or whether there really is academic to. impact on it. It uh -huh. seems to. Um, my question is, do are you two the only fourth grades in that building? Yes. So it works, so nobody's like saying, oh, I want my kid in this room because it's flexible seating no. versus, okay, mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you see the teamwork done. Mm -hmm. And honestly, at, at Webb, more and more teachers have incorporated even little parts of flexible seating mm -hmm. into their classrooms, maybe a chair here or a yoga ball there, and everyone's trying it out kind of in their own way, which mm -hmm. is nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, interesting in the articles you gave us for homework here, um, John was just mentioning about the kids. It, they say distracting behavior has been almost completely eliminated mm -hmm. because they're so engaged mm -hmm. in where they're sitting and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd almost think the reverse, you know, they're bouncing around, but no, mm -hmm. it's the opposite. That's mm -hmm. excellent. Mm -hmm. I just. Anyone else? John. Uh, Mr. Verderam, better be careful because I think by next week everyone's going to have beanbag chairs out of their house and into web because I'm sure there's a lot of those beanbag chairs in everyone's attic right now. Great. So get ready. Okay. Anyone else? Chris? Uh, Chris. Justin? Such well-spoken students. I'm yes. so impressed. Uh -huh. so, such a good job. I wish I was able to speak like that when I was in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank great you. experience thank for you. them. Very thank good. Thank you. Anyone yes. else? Just want to say uh, thank you very much. I love the innovation from Mr. Verderam saying go for it. Uh, mm -hmm. Love the research. I know Mrs. Dunham, I've talked with you before about research back in the past. And you know, for the students to hear the student's assessment of this and to actually see this in action is, is really great. We talk about students taking ownership for their education, mm -hmm. and that's what we have here. This is an example of that. So thank you for your feedback. Um, I will be over soon to sit in one of the beanbag chairs, so mm -hmm. be prepared. But thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thanks thank you. again. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, thank you again. Next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of our last regular Board of Ed meeting on January 9th, 2018. 
Are there any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve these? So moved. A second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Anyone else? Those minutes are approved. So now, if there's anyone interested in coming up to make a public comment, please come to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we have a five minute limit. Good evening, Ken Lesser, 8 Hawthorne Way. And if I can be half as articulate as the students and the <laughs> teachers, I'll be doing okay. So uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Superintendent, Justin, hello Justin, <laughs> Ellen, everybody. I have three things I wanted to talk about real quickly. Two that are on your agenda, although one you pulled off and one that's not. Uh, first, I wanted to talk to you quickly. We had the first shared services meeting of the new uh, newly elected council and board. And I want to congratulate the members of the board uh, who came in with, uh, we had a great discussion. Um, there's a wonderful spirit of working together, which I think is great. And I think there's a spirit of, it's not the board side or the council side, it's just Weathersfield. So I applaud the members of the board, um, the superintendent, and, and all the members of the council who came too. So that was the first thing. The second thing I wanted to talk about was I want to applaud you guys for being so forward thinking with your education foundation and with your other initiatives. The, I think the education foundation is going to be a great thing in future years to help us uh, fund different things. And as I have a vested interest of a parent that has two kids in the school system, I'm really grateful that you guys are so forward thinking. The third and final thing that I wanted to talk about was on um, February 2nd, the Mayor's Charity Ball is hosting a wine and whiskey event as an interim event to our upcoming third annual Mayor's Ball. And I want to remind you what the three things are that we are funding. First, we are funding a backpack program for students who are on free and reduced lunches so they can eat on the weekends. Secondly, we are funding what's called a commodity box to help our poorest seniors. There's 79 seniors who get this monthly commodity box. And what we're doing with the proceeds from the mayor's ball and with the money we raised from the wine and whiskey event, we're supplementing what they get from the commodity box with fresh produce. So they're getting healthier food, healthier options. And the third and final thing that we uh, fund with the proceeds of the mayor's ball is early childhood education scholarships. I don't know, I have to tell you guys, you know it better than I do, how important it is to get a fresh start and a fast start and the benefits of having um, early childhood education. So we have funded money, we have provided money to fund 10 scholarships so far and eight of them, I'm happy to say, have been uh, funded and kids are going that otherwise wouldn't. So on Friday, February 2nd, and Ellen, if I could give you this maybe to pass around to everybody, is our wine and whiskey event. We've sold 100 tickets so far. Uh, it's at the Keeney Center, so it's not this coming Friday, but a week from Friday. I don't know if you can pass this around. If you haven't got your tickets, I hope you can get your tickets. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ken. Okay, is there anyone else? All right. <clears throat> Mr. Emmett, you have communication to share? I do. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight, a motion is before you to take uh, action of uh, reducing the 2017-18 operating budget by a total of $274,556. This reduction is a portion of the ECS reduction that the governor took as a means of addressing the unassigned savings that he was tasked with upon passage of the budget. This reduction is in addition to the $467,433 that we re reduced from the operating budget back in November. This reduction tonight will certainly necessitate a freeze in the budget for the remainder of the 2017-18 school year. In addition, two positions, uh, one a custodial, one a secretarial, will remain unfilled for the remainder of the school year. Um, we'll have some additional detail um, with regard to uh, the reductions uh, at the time where the motion is, is read. 
Uh, in addition to the current operating budget, we're working on the development of next year's budget. Um, we're currently in the process of populating salaries. Uh, we're looking at the insurance. Uh, we have some other options with regard to uh, OPEB. We'll have the OPEB trust that we'll be responsible for, uh, as well as some other fixed costs. Um, it's my expectation I'll be presenting the proposed budget to you at the next board meeting on February 13th. Uh, the draft strategic plan is currently up on the website along with the survey. Parents, residents, alumni, and students are encouraged to provide feedback on this plan. Um, as we move forward with future planning for the Weathersfield Public Schools. Um, I will be sending out a school messenger reminder later this week to parents, and we'll be reaching out to the Weathersfield Chamber of Commerce as well. Um, just a reminder that we're in the midst of flu season. I'm happy to report that we have not at this time seen a significant uptick in absences. I did meet with our nursing supervisor, Claude Bobrowski, last week. Um, we are monitoring um, the uh, numbers throughout our schools. Um, we have received guidance from the Connecticut Department of Public Health concerning cleaning, and this document has been shared with all of our custodial staff across the district. Uh, the Facilities and Maintenance Committee met last week to further discuss the long-range planning for our elementary buildings. This is something we've been talking about for a while. Um, and also included in the discussion was the idea of redistricting. Well, we talked a little bit about that back in December when I did the CIP presentation. This is a process that certainly is one that needs to be done methodically and carefully. Um, we see this as an opportunity to look at our existing schools and explore options related to renovation, building new, and perhaps consolidation. The committee met last Wednesday with Colliers International. Um, this group does project management and planning for districts. At this time, we are awaiting a cost summary of services related to the assessment of our current buildings. On the redistricting issue, um, we will be meeting with a demographer from Malone and McRoom, uh, McBroom, that'll actually be next Thursday, to gather information for the committee. It's important to note that this planning is in the very early stages. We need to ensure that any future planning regarding school construction is approved by the state. Completing this foundational work will go a long way toward making certain any projects proposed would be eligible for reimbursement. And as far as the timeline goes, we see no immediate impact concerning schools or boundaries within the district. Upon receipt of the cost summary, we'll need to discuss how the board wishes to proceed with regard to engagement for any services. And with that, that's communications. Great, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Emmett? Well, that was very clear, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Diane? Um, redistricting, does that have to get approved by the state? At this time, we'll have that uh, conversation on Thursday with the actual demographer, and we'll talk about um, kind of what our scope of work is. Are we looking at it just solely from, like, looking at the elementary schools and saying we'll go from five to four? Um, looking at it from a perspective of with building renovation. Do we build new? Do we have enough space in the existing buildings? Um, do we renovate as new? So that is certainly a question that I'll ask. Yeah. As Michael said, we're at the beginning of this, so a lot of questions have not been answered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just wondering if once we if we have to do that, if mm -hmm. that's something that the state has to. I would assume the yeah. state has to bless it. They have to bless everything. So. And it would all be part of a plan. It mm -hmm. wouldn't be just yeah. randomly redistricting. Diane, I don't recall any state involvement in redistricting of a town, and when the major one was done in '81 when I was at what was called Fuller School, and that closed, and I was involved in most of the, at that time, now it's a long time ago, it could be different today, Michael, you know how mm -hmm. laws change, mm -hmm. but um, at that time there was no state involvement, it was, and then the second redistricting was done with Pet Proctor, a small piece, and that was not, I was at those meetings, and I don't remember any state thing, but Michael will check it to be yeah. sure because it all can change with time. And if I could just add, Elaine, the, the piece that was done back in the 05, 06 range actually was a response to uh, demographics yes. that were quite skewed, yes. so that was yes. something that the state had recognized. And but the web. Correct. And web yeah. open. Absolutely right. correct. So, um, again, I'll have a lot more information coming yeah. forward to the board on that. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, so we'll move on to our action items. We do have action item 6A. Kevin, would you please read that for us? Of course. Uh, move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the 2017-2018 revised operating budget of $57,035,883. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Yes, if I... Uh, 
to just go back through the list again, um, we've provided uh, this evening to the uh, Finance and Information Management Committee, uh, obviously full board will receive this as well, um, a, a list of reductions that we're looking at to address this reduction of 274,556. Um, we look to recognize the bulk of our savings through the uh, budget freeze. Um, this includes uh, maintenance uh, and plant repairs, maintenance of uh, plant in terms of construction services, other areas that we're looking to uh, freeze, elementary reading books and periodicals. We look to save $25,000 there. We're anticipating uh, regular instruction, professional development. Uh, freezing that line will save us $20,000. In terms of salaries, uh, we have a custodial position um, at Weathersfield High School that is currently vacant. Uh, we would have that remain vacant. We also have a secretarial position at Weathersfield High School that would remain vacant. Um, the secretarial position is a savings of $20,000. We project the um, a prorated savings for the custodial position at $15,000. In terms of transportation services with salaries, one of the things that has occurred, we had a uh, staff member in the business office who had resigned. Um, she was not on payroll for a period of time, so Matt was going it alone. Um, we have hired that individual and the difference between her salary and the outgoing person uh, provides us with savings of $25,000. In addition to that, you'll um, also note the substitute teacher salaries. We've reduced that area uh, or frozen it um, for savings of $25,000. We anticipate lower sub usage based on the fact that there will be less in the way of professional development. We also have a couple of items here with regard to one to uh, homeless transportation. Uh, we budgeted a certain amount for homeless transportation based on last year's trends. This year we have found that we are trending lower um, and feel at this point in time that we can uh, freeze that item and uh, use it for savings. Yeah, I think it's important to be clear that up to this point in time, the total reduction for ECS that we have faced this year, 741,000, uh, I think it was just, just shy of 742,000. And yes, yeah, seven, yes, yeah, exactly <laughs> correct. Good work. For me, you're surprised. Very well done. <laughs> you know, obviously, obviously it has an impact. There's no two ways about it. And one of the things that we were charged with, certainly from the board, was trying to maintain low class sizes and trying very hard to limit the impact on students. And I think we've, we've done that. I will tell you that it has been difficult, certainly in the realm of the administrators with the loss of two administrators. Our first administrative position we cut um, in last year's budget to get down to that 2.06% number. Um, I would say at this point in time, pending tonight's action, you're going from an original budget of 2.06% increase, we're down to a 0.75% increase at this point in time. We have maintained our programs. Um, you know, we know obviously special ed costs continue to be a concern for us. I'm sure uh, Mr. Hill will talk more about that during uh, meetings held. But you know, the reality also is we know for next year, we're looking at increases here and we have to look at ways to address that and looking outside the box. We've talked about some of the work with the foundation that's getting off the ground. We're talking about the grant funding that we're doing and our partnership with Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. We'll be working with them, uh, be with, a, with them for a planning meeting next week. So we're looking for alternate sources of revenue here. We recognize that times are tight. Um, I think in terms of moving forward and where we're at with next year's budget, you know, you're not going to see a lot of new initiatives here. You know, we're really going to have to hold tight. But in the interim, we believe that we can finish off this year um, you know, on target. Uh, we mentioned earlier this evening at the Finance and Information Committee meeting that um, this current year, we're operating at about a $50,000 deficit. Given the amount of reductions, that's actually quite amazing. So uh, you know, certainly kudos to our business manager, Matt Kazaka, um, our department heads, and our principals that have really worked hard to spend very wisely. So this is not an easy thing to do. Um, and not something we've had to do in the past. So, but it is the reality. It's something we must face. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? I just have a question. Michael, mm -hmm. you just mentioned a $50,000 deficit. Where do we see that on this paperwork? Is it, that is out. Kevin's been coaching th me. That is <laughs> out. <laughs> that's <laughs> a different paper. Okay. That's outside. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Kevin will talk about that. No problem. No problem. Thank yes, you, sir. Um, have we... We talked at the beginning of um, the school year. We notified all the student um, groups and stuff that we are not going to be able to afford to. We ran into a problem last year with DECA and some mm -hmm. of the other groups. 
have they been put on notice earlier on that we were not going to be able to, to do that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Any other discussion on it? Any questions? <laughs> Kevin? Um, just a, a comment, really. Um, as the superintendent mentioned, uh, you know, we have 0.75 increase um, year over year, which is um, far below <coughs> any contractual obligations that we have to now absorb. Um, and it was 0.42% uh, the year before. So we're, we're, we're definitely running very lean um, on the board side. And I'd also like to recognize, I and mean, we had one point, over $1.3 million mid-year reduction um, in ECS. Um, and the town has absorbed uh, almost half of that, $593,000. And I want to thank the town council and the leadership of, of Mayor Bello uh, because that is, um, that is reflective of that they are valuing education uh, in our town. And they certainly put uh, their money where their mouth is, and that needs to be um, that needs to be celebrated. I absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. Mayor Bello has been on our side since the day she got elected for the kids of this town, and I have to thank her. Anyone else? All right. So no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion six a passes all right so we'll move on and we will be discussing meetings held so facilities and maintenance john would you like to speak to that on january 10th absolutely uh, on january 10th we had our first facilities and maintenance meeting um, we as uh, the superintendent uh, explained we went over the uh, redistricting concerns uh, minutes are in your packet. Those are the people that didn't, were not at the meeting, but uh, it's a very active committee. Uh, we went forward with our NESDEC study and the different approaches that we're looking at at this time. Um, one of the interesting facts that did come out of that meeting was that the NESDEC study indicated that the Weathersfield in 2017 would have uh, 3,580 students to date. Uh, of 2017, we have 3,593 students in our district. So we are pretty much on target, a little bit above uh, the norm of NASDAQ. So we're moving right along in that area with our enrollment. So I think we've, we're steady. We're not decreasing our enrollment. Um, as the superintendent mentioned, we are uh, looking into uh, the future. Um, and I think it's very important and it's a key component of Weathersfield and uh, what ground levels we're going to be uh, making. We're going to be taking it, uh, I think, a different approach. Um, Elaine, you had mentioned that in the past the state was not involved. Um, I think there's a lot of changes in the state of Connecticut since 2005 when we did look at a redistricting plan. So I think at this point, that's why we're moving down the road in the process that we're in right now. And um, we're going to be you know, discussing uh, the future and uh, a program for Weathersfield uh, in different uh, scenarios. So having said that, uh, if you have any questions on the minutes that were in your packet, um, I think we're, this is going to be a very active committee. And uh, we've got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. so. Any comments? Okay, thank you, John. All right, correct council met on, or did not meet on January 17th because it was a snow day. Um, Polly will be our representative now, so she'll be going to the February <coughs> meeting. Shared Services Committee, Ginger, would you um, speak to that? Sure. Shared Services Committee met yesterday, January 22nd. The committee has historically dealt with services shared between the town council and the board of education of Weathersfield. There are currently nine major areas which the two parties share, including various insurance and pension plans, the financial management system, and most recently, information technology. This last was reviewed by Keith Raffanello, who noted that the combination of the town and education IT departments worked well and has allowed for some cost savings, synergies, and efficiency improvements. 
Shared services has typically taken advantage of opportunities presented by retirements, as was the case for the IT manager and merger. We again have such an opportunity with the upcoming retirement of Mr. Bushy, the Board of Ed's Director of Maintenance and Operations. There was significant discussion of the potential for combining the town and board maintenance departments, and the consensus was to move forward with planning for such a combination under Sally Katz, the current town director of physical services. Mr. Emmett noted that Mr. Bushy is currently reviewing and updating his job description and that this revised document could form part of the combination effort. Ms. Katz and Shared Services Chairman Ken Lesser were invited to attend. The next meeting of the Facilities and Maintenance Committee to continue the discussion regarding the combination of the two departments. It was noted that it is important that the current level of staff responsiveness and school building cleanliness be maintained going forward. Little immediate cost savings is expected from the combination of the maintenance departments, but efficiencies should lead to some savings going forward. In response to a question from Mr. Lesser, Town Manager Jeff Bridges noted that the Shared Services Committee has not historically looked at potential sharing of services or costs with other towns. The Capital Region Council of Governments, of which Weathersfield is a member, has looked at various synergies but has concentrated on providing services to towns smaller than Weathersfield. It is not currently investigating any areas that might help Weathersfield save money. Mr. Lesser closed the meeting by saying that the committee needs to be proactive in finding cost savings for the town in light of the current budget situation. The committee will meet again in March to further that discussion and to set goals. Thank you, Ginger. Any questions or discussions? Um, I have one question. Me. Go ahead. Uh, just an update. Uh, I uh, had reached out to my colleague up in Enfield. Uh, Enfield uh, does shared services with custodial and maintenance. Um, so I will be um, going up and taking a look at what they do and how they do it. Uh, in addition to that, spoke with the town manager this morning, and uh, we will be meeting next week to talk about some, some future planning. So in spite of the fact we're going to meet in March, we're going to get together ahead of that time and just you know, take a look at what we have. Great. John? Yeah, um, I was able to attend that meeting yesterday, and i got to just say um, it was a, a great meeting. I was uh, happy to be there and to real, I think we're engaged. I think there was a lot of uh, information. I think we're uh, excited to work forward and move in a new direction to find out some, um, you know, uh, ways that Weathersfield can work together in the area of maintenance and uh, facilities. One of the things that did come out of that meeting was that um, it always seemed as if there was the town and the Board of Ed. And I think the philosophy of the group came out of that meeting, and I can speak from what I saw and what I heard, it's no longer the town and the Board of Ed, it's Weathersfield. And I think that if we start thinking in that line, um, I think we'll be in a better spot for the future. I agree, very much so. Mm -hmm. Diane? You might want to also look at um, the town of Mansfield although it's a lot smaller than us, for years they have been the model of shared services. They um, had a shared finance department for their school and for the regional school district that houses E.O. Smith and maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, and they were doing that back when I worked for them in the 90s. So, and I think Jill Krieger now is the superintendent she there. Is. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know who the town manager is there anymore, but... Um, They've been pretty successful at sharing services between um, three entities, actually. Mm -hmm. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Elaine, you had a comment? I, yes? Uh, my question was what John Cassio answered. Oh, was, was the room um, divided, you know, board, oh. town, or are we looking at a Weathersfield group? And John answered the question nicely. Thank you. Any other comment? Ken's out in the audience there, and it really was a very well-run meeting, which most are, but um, it did have that feeling of unity, which I felt, John felt, and I think others did too. Great. Any other comments on that? 
Okay, Kevin, finance and information, which we just left. Yeah, we just, uh, the finance committee met uh, prior to this meeting. Uh, Mr. Evett gave a terrific update on where we are, uh, spe specifically regarding um, the changes we have to make regarding the 2017-2018, um, I'm sorry, 2000, yes, 2017-2018 mm -hmm. um, fiscal year. Um, of the, and we had a reduction of $867,000 um, from the state, the town has absorbed, like we said, 593,000, and um, Weathersfield Public Schools is responsible for the $274,000 <coughs> balance, which uh, we will do through uh, budget freeze and unfilled positions. Um, as we noted, this is a 0.75% increase over last year's um, budget. Um, and then regarding looking forward to next year's budget, which we, um, as Mr. Emmett had said, they're planning for now. Um, uh, he'll have a budget address February 13th um, for us, and uh, it's a quick turnaround. We'll have to have approval by March 15th, I believe. Correct. Um, so that gives us a little over a month, um, and we'll, as soon as we see it on the 13th, we'll be begin to schedule workshops. Um, and just so we can, everyone gets a flavor of kind of how we budget and how difficult it can be, um, in terms of some of the exposure we have specifically to special education, we're looking at, in just uh, this past year, uh, we've had an increase of about $1.2 million and 11 new outplacements um, in special education. And we have a three additional um, outplacements that we have yet to um, get an exact cost for. So. It's a moving target that we must adjust to on the fly. Um, mm. And that is it for finance. Okay, any questions for Kevin? Okay. Um, meeting schedule, these are coming up. We have policy and planning on January 25th at 5.30. Student Program and Services on February 6th at 6.30, and WEC, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative on February 12th at 4.30. Is there any unfinished business that way, Die. The Wellness Committee is meeting um, on the 30th oh, at okay. 6 o'clock. And that's the Board Wellness Committee, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Okay, anybody else, John? The uh, parade committee is meeting on Wednesday, January 31st at 7 p.m. at the Pitton Community Center. Everyone's welcome to join. <laughs> March right over. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, I have a very serious issue I need to discuss. I uh, showed up for a January 17th PTO fundraiser at the Chipotle Grill <clears throat> for the Charles Wright School, and nobody was there to give me a burrito. Was does anyone know that was postponed? Because I think it was a storm that night. Yeah, there was yeah. a storm. Was it? it might have been postponed. Okay, that was not, I wasn't day. reading wrong. I, yeah. I still got the burrito, but I couldn't, <laughs> give, I still couldn't give it to the Charles Wright School. So if someone could let me know, uh, I'd appreciate that. So Usually got snow days most and, and just a quick question. Do we, is there a new list of the, all the PTO chairs and their schedule? I, I, does that get circulated pretty regularly if I could grab one of those? Yeah, I'll That'd have to send you one. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Any other unfinished business? Okay, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we do have a five-minute limit. Okay. All right. Are there any board comments? Di? My report. Your report. No. Um, I want to comment on the um, the weekly updates for the schools. Oh, good. Um, is that when you want me to do it now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Um, I really enjoy reading these to see what everybody's up to. Um, and it also gives me things to stop at the bus stop and talk to the kids in my neighborhood about. Um, Charles Wright 
um, I was happy to see the, the status of their fifth and sixth grade explorations program. That was a program the principal came and spoke to us about, I think, early on this school year. Um, they're involved in mural painting, creating movies in, in the band and choir. Um, so I'm glad to see that that's progressing. Emerson Williams, um, I'm glad to see that the elementary schools are still having their talent shows. As yeah. any of the parents know and had to sit through <laughs> all those years. <laughs> um, they're a lot of fun. And their dear graduation, which I assume all the, the schools are also having <coughs> around this time of year. Um, Hamner School um, looked like they were involved in a lot of reading and writing activities, as was Highcrest School. Um, and I'd like to thank Hamner School for their civic contribution of collecting as someone who's been affected by um, ALS a donation they the kids collected over $500 to donate to the ALS Foundation oh. um, as I mentioned high crest um, the whole school seems to be participating in writing activities um, I was excited to see that the fifth grades are learning goal setting which is an important skill that I'm still trying to teach people in the <laughs> workplace. Um, Webb is planning for a career day and the random acts of kindness that they're gonna st start um, doing some activities in February. I think that was a program Kevin and I, when we went to their PTO meeting last year, mm -hmm. they spoke about that program. Um, the Silestine, I haven't been in the Silestine Middle School for quite a while. Um, but it was very nice to walk in and kids have done these huge murals of Weathersfield down that main hall there that um, were very impressive, different um, sites in town. And last night I attended um, a program, and I know I'm gonna mispronounce the guy's name, Raj Bhulian, B-H-U-L-Y-A-N. It was a program that was given to the students during the day. This is a gentleman who, um, oh. after 9-11, was one of three individuals who was shot in Texas because he was Muslim. Two of the other people that were shot were killed. He was, um, he lost his eye. Um, and the gentleman that, well, I don't know if I would call him a gentleman, but um, the person that shot them was found guilty and, sent, and given the death penalty in Texas. Um, he spoke about his voyage to forgiving this guy and the, fam the other families forgiving this, this guy and then how he um, joined forces with the ACLU and the public defenders and so forth um, to get this guy off a of death row. And it was very impressive um, to hear about his journey and the importance of kindness and and ridding hatred and it was very apropos given our current situation that our nation's in but um it was nice to hear too um the vice principal read some of the letters that the kids had wrote during the day in response to the program they had so it was it was a really great program and i can only think that this is a program that the high school kids should hear mm -hmm. um so if we, if we could get him back mm -hmm. um, to talk to the high school kids, that would be great. In all the schools, it's, um, I'm glad to see that there's active PTO activities. Um, a lot of the PTOs are raising money for a lot of the activities. Sixth graders, um, the kindness and um, community activities throughout the schools is very impressive. And thank you, Di. And um, I have to give my plug because the chairman of SafeGrad again. <laughs> <laughs> um, the SafeGrad dance is going to be March 24th at the community center. Um, we have tickets available, so if you're interested in going. And we're also soliciting um, for donations for our raffle. This is our biggest fundraiser, um, as you all know, because I talked at, about it at nauseum two years ago. Um, the parents raised over $50,000 to put this event on every year, so. Thanks for doing it again. Let me know. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do you have any more kids? This now? will definitely be my last time. <laughs> <laughs> I promised my husband last time was the last time, but this is definitely gonna be my last time. <laughs> okay, any comments? All right. 
could I Michael? just sure. build upon what you said, Diane? You made a comment about um, the uh, event that occurred at um, Silas Dean. And Cindy shared with me, Cindy Fries, our assistant principal, shared with me what the students had said. And there was one that was really poignant. And if you don't mind, I'd really like to share it. Um, this comes from one of our uh, Silas Dean Middle School students. And it reads, race's ability to transcend our differences and rejoice in our ingenuity is both transformational and inspirational. Although his true account of adversity and prejudice is heartbreaking, his resilience is invigorating as his kindly personality is rejuvenating. Bottom line, his philosophy rings true. Treat others as you want to be treated. A poignant lecture with great insight. It's not to be forgotten. Wow. So it they definitely really had an impact on our students. <laughs> You're hired. That's written by You're hired. Hired. <laughs> Yes, that's written by one of Man, our students. Teaching something good. <laughs> so, well done. And, and this is one of many. So it definitely had an impact on the kids. So yeah, thank I, you. I just think High school kids need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we could go. We had shared services that yeah. night, so yeah, so yes. that would be excellent. Unfor Thank you. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of people there. Oh, there's probably like maybe 20. Oh, okay. Anybody else with comments? Okay, I have two comments I'd like to uh, mention tonight. Um, we heard from teachers who are creating a 21st century classroom for their students. And um, the system, the Wesleyan School System, is working on implementing this leadership model. And this model encourages innovative teacher leaders. So I applaud them and I applaud the principals in our schools who are taking risk in order to create positive environments for innovation. And tonight, the Board of Ed again worked on reducing our 2017-18 budget. We are all hoping that now we have a diminished but done and stable school budget until the school year ends. Central Office has been working on the 2018-19 budget as we speak. The Board does continue to prioritize security in our schools and small class sizes. So we will be working on that and hopefully getting those goals. So anyone else? Then we get time for Justin, life at the high school. Sensing a trend in very well-spoken students tonight. Hopefully I can <laughs> continue that. <laughs> We're watching. <laughs> We're listening. <laughs> Registration information for spring sports is now available on the WHS athletics page of the Weathersfield Schools website. This Friday, the 26th, is the last day to sign up for the SAT prep session that starts on January, January 30th. For registration forms, students can go to the Adult Education Office in room 211. And finally, the Junior Post High School Planning Night is being held tomorrow, January 24th, at 7 p.m. in the WHS Auditorium. Students and parents should both attend this night for inf important information on life after high school. Thank you. Did a great job. <laughs> Did I continue the trend? What? <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Any questions for Justin? All right. So I'm going to make a motion that we move to executive session for the purpose of discussing the superintendent of schools goals. May I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. So that concludes. Can, I, I have a quick question. Sure. We're going under executive session to discuss um, goals. I don't understand how that's a superintendent has goals every year, and we're going oh to for his personal performance. Right. Oh, okay. I apologize. I, I that's I, all right. I was uh, thinking of something else. That's all. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that concludes the public part of our board meeting. Thank you all for coming and for watching, and good night.